Yeah, talking tax, barking tax, as a case may be. Tom and I noticed that really funny thing with the dog jumping up and down. Shameless exploitation of puppies. <laughs> exploitation of puppies for a good cause. Absolutely. So, you know, if you have a few bucks, go on PayPal, use the donate button on our website, thinktechhawaii.com, and help us continue doing what we do. Because what we do is good, good for the community, good for everybody. It's a bunch of volunteers getting together and you know, kind of um, understanding the world better and helping you understand the world better. So, thinktechhawaii.com, donate, blue button. All right, Tom Yamachika, we're talking about talking tax with Tom. The legislator, 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 legislature is in session and no man or woman's property is safe. Absolutely. So we have, oh, Donovan's dozen or more of tax bills there that are going to affect your pocketbook. Yeah, I, I kind of got the name from, uh, there was a Civil Beat article that came out recently uh, that, that, that uh, had a whiteboard uh, taken from uh, Senator Dela Cruz's office, and there were 14 bills, all of which were revenue raisers. Yeah. Some of them are still alive, some of, them ha some of them aren't. When it got to me, there were 12 still alive, so I called it Donovan's Dozen. Okay, you could also call it the Dirty Dozen. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to say that. That's not in my script. <laughs> okay, so it might even be more than that. Why don't we talk about some of the ones that are on the, li the Donovan list, if you will. Yeah, we um, uh, spoke some, some time back about uh, real estate investment trusts, or REITs. Um, uh, there are two sides to this bill. Uh, one is uh, that uh, some the, the proponents of the bill see uh, what REITs are doing as a loophole in that they are uh, in Hawaii, they don't pay income tax because they're allowed not to under a federal structure. The federal structure assumes that the, dividend, that the dividends uh, that the REIT pays are going to be uh, taxed to the shareholders and, paid by, and the tax paid by the shareholders. But if the, the, um, the dividend recipients don't live here, they don't pay to Hawaii, they pay to someplace else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the REITs, on the other hand, say that uh, they're more than paying their fair share through GE tax, property tax, uh, and other things, even if it's not income tax. And the debate, they would pay GE and property tax anyway, whether they were a REIT or just an ordinary corporation. Right, right. The one thing that strikes me, and maybe you have a better handle on it, is that in Hawaii, which is the object of uh, affection by many capital concentrations on the mainland, um, we have a fair number of REITs. In fact, large um, projects and properties here are owned by REITs, uh, perhaps more than you would expect? Yeah, uh, we have in Hawaii, I think the largest concentration of REITs per capita than any other state, by far. Uh, there was a, uh, you know, some graphs that the, um, uh, the REIT proponents put together, or the REIT uh, bill proponents put together, and it's, it's very remarkable. I mean, you know, most states are like this, and then Hawaii comes up at the end like that. Yeah, the way we've developed since statehood. And we do need, you know, we do need capital, and I suppose an argument that would be made by um, people who oppose this bill is that this will, um, this will disencourage capital investment in large projects, such as what we have right now from REITs. Right, that's, that's their argument. Um, so the question is, well, if, if we pull the plug on, uh, on taxing REITs like, like Vermont has, I mean, uh, New, New Hampshire, New Hampshire has, um, are, are the REITs all going to go away? Uh, I, I, can't, I can't see that happening, uh, primarily because a lot of them established themselves here uh, to get federal benefits, and, and their, their REITs to get federal benefits. They established themselves here, you know, knowing or in spite of the, the GET and property tax. And the federal benefits got better because mm -hmm. the corporate tax rate went down. Mm -hmm. So one of the prospects of this bill, I mean, it's, it's, it's well past crossover now. There's been a lot of discussion about it. 
still alive, and I guess it still has more proponents than opponents, although it does have some significant local opponents, actually. Yeah, so it's going to conference committee. So um, uh, the uh, House and Senate will work it out. Um, they may pass it, they may not. Uh, a lot goes in, con uh, you know, goes in the conference committee dealings that we don't know about, because uh, conference committees only uh, take their votes in public, but everything else is, is back room. If this they, bill they, passes, they don't take testimony. If this yeah. bill passes, it doesn't. Uh, what effect does it have on the ordinary Joe Schmo taxpayer? Well, we would hope that if the bill passes and, and REITs pay more tax, uh, then it'll take some of the burden off uh, the rest of us who otherwise would have to carry the burden of state government. Mm. Okay. All right, we're going to see what happens. I, we, we have to regroup as soon as we can to find out how that goes. What else you got? Okay. Um, there are some, I guess, more technical bills. Like there's one uh, that, that does what we call single sales factor. And what that is, is when you have a multi-state corporation or multi-state business, uh, how, the, the, the real science is, well, how do we figure out how much of its income each state gets to tax? Because obviously we can't control the laws of any other state. Uh, but, the, but the way it's come down is that pretty much all states have adopted a formula of some kind. Um, and, the, and the variables that normally go into the formula are property, i.e., how much property does the corporation have in Hawaii versus everywhere else. So a proportion of the property here as against all the property everywhere. Right. And the same, and the same factors are, are computed for payroll and sales. Okay. So right now what we say is we average property factor, payroll factor, sales factor, and take an equally weighted average of all three, multiply that by the corporation's total net income from everywhere, and, that's, and the, the result is ours. That's what we get to tax. Is that, is that used elsewhere? Yeah. Uh, maybe the real problem would be is if you had different formulae in different states, and it all added up to more than one. <laughs> so, well, that, that, that's a real problem, you see, because um, each state has different variations of the formula. Okay. And when you add everything up, it can be more than the, um, the, the, the net income of the corporation or, or way less, depending on what it does. Um, the, uh, the, most of the states, Upweight the sales factor uh, in some fashion. California was one of the, the first to go double weighted sales. Uh, now there are like 30, 30 something states that only consider the sales factor. Mm. And they basically you know, weighted 100%, and, and uh, they, they downweight property and payroll to zero. So, what have we been doing up to this point? I mean, this can't be a brand new issue. Um, what, what has Hawaii been doing? Um, Basically, the classic formula, which is the average of property payroll and sales. And what's the change in the legislature? Excuse me? Is there a change? Is there a bill? Yes. And what, how does the bill change that? To go to single sales factor, just like the other 31 states. Okay. And so we'll be consistent with more other states then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, the thing to remember, though, is that there'd be, there, there'd be winners and losers. Um, you, 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 for example, may want to really tax this one corporation because they know they have property and people here, but if all they do is export, we have a zero sales factor, and so we won't be able to tax them. Uh, so that may not be the best solution. They could, they, could, they could have a loophole that way. Maybe or may not. You know, again, it, uh, every, every business is different. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you have a lot of different circumstances. Well, so this change that's pending in the ledge right now, right? is this going to increase revenue and thus um, you know, alleviate the burden on Joe Schmo taxpayer? I have to say, uh, I think uh, uh, the projections are that there would be some increase in revenue, but uh, you know, who knows whether that's true or not. So it's a matter of looking at it, assuming the bill passes, after the bill passes and comparing it to how things were before the bill passed. Right. Hmm. These are very technical issues. But, yeah. you know, it strikes me that, um, like, like the Council on Revenues, somebody, uh, and there's a, an equivalent federal agency too, uh, the Office of Management 
and budget, um, makes a calculation of how much a change in the tax law is going to affect you know, the budget and, and the fisc in, in that jurisdiction. Um, do we not know? Is there nobody looking at how this would affect um, our tax revenues and our well, budget? There, there are uh, revenue projections that are done uh, by uh, Department of Taxation. Uh, they don't necessarily share those with the public. So. Okay. All right. Well, maybe they'll share it with us if we ask them nicely. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> what else you got? Um, next, we got marketplace facilitators. Um, so what we what, talked about this last time, right? Right, right. So uh, it's the Amazon marketplace, the Walmart marketplace, and and companies like that. Uh, they basically want to make them the retailers, so they pay the tax, and the uh, and the people on whose behalf they're acting, uh, they they become wholesalers. So they still have to pay tax if they you know if they meet the um, uh, the nexus standards. Uh, uh, but their liability would then be just half a percent rather than rather than four percent. And we would primarily look to uh, the, the the marketplace facilitator companies, such as the Amazons of the world. Okay, so Amazon is the marketplace facilitator, and, and that it calls on some some related company, some one of its um, affiliates, uh, affiliated marketing company that actually makes the widget. Well, it's it's, it's an unrelated company. Okay. Yeah. So. So it could be like Dan's Dog Food in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, they they, they want to reach a, a national marketplace, so they, they sign up with Amazon. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, fine, we'll do your marketing on our website. We'll send you our leads. You fulfill the orders, or we can fulfill them for you, mm -hmm. and we'll take a cut. Okay. That's what they do. Okay. And they had been taking the position that if Dan's Dog Food doesn't have nexus with Hawaii, um, there's no liability. And for so, any tax. Yeah, for any tax, and then Amazon doesn't have to collect. And Amazon is not paying the, all the sales tax then because it's acting as a, a reseller. Is that what you're saying? It was, it was acting as an agent for Dan's Dog Food who isn't in Hawaii. So now, we want to they, fix that. Yeah. They, they were paying on uh, sales that they made themselves. Okay, so if they, if they uh, did uh, have affiliates do all the work like you, like you were starting to say, mm -hmm. uh, and it says on the, uh, on the websites, Fulfilled by Amazon.com LLC, right? Then they were paying tax on that. And I think they would charge the full four percent rate. Yeah, and repay the four percent rate, and no problem. Yeah, and they started they started doing this voluntarily like a couple of years ago, in I think April 2017. Um, and but that that was like half of their only half of their business. Okay. The other half was the you know, I act on behalf of somebody. So else what, what is the bill? What would the bill change? The bill it's it pick up the other half. So as a result. Collectively, they pay the full 4% or whatever the 4% rate is. Right. Okay. Speaking of which, how are we doing on an increase? I think that went away, huh? An increase in the, in the gross excise rate? Yeah, that's uh, part, of the, uh, part of Donovan's dozen as well. Um, but uh, since then, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, House Finance Chair said, you know, we ain't hearing the bill. So it's dead. Unpopular. <laughs> Unpopular. I mean, they want more money. They're trying to raise as much money as they can. I, I guess uh, correctly, they see a need to have more money in the in the bank. But if if they get an uproar over it, they're going to be reluctant. Yeah, and and uh, that's kind of what I see a lot with um, revenue raising bills. They start in the Senate, they cross over to the House, they get and they and they get um, they get maybe a hearing, but they die in the House because. Every House member gets reelected every two years. That's, <laughs> you're being very practical Tom, and realistic. <laughs> <laughs> that, just my observation. Well, I mean, if I'm a, a legislator, better if I'm a committee chair and this sort of thing, and I get, you know, 100 emails on a given Monday morning, uh, don't do that increase in gross excise tax, I'm going to think twice. And if every member of the committee gets it, hmm, they're all going to think twice. So I suspect that's what happened in the House. Well, but then, the, then of course, there are going to be 99 other emails that say, hey, I'm a teacher, please support us. Sure. Yeah. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <clears throat> we just figured that out, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? Okay. Um, there's a bill that would require 
uh, partnerships, estates, and trusts to withhold taxes on the income of non-resident partners and beneficiaries. Currently, we do this for S corporations, uh, but but that's about all. Mm -hmm. um, when we when we have uh, partners in a partnership or LLC members um, who derive income from business in Hawaii, uh, and the entity doesn't pay tax, we're supposed to get it somehow from the uh, from the member, the shareholder, or the owner, you know, wh wherever it is. Uh, sometimes those people live in other states. They're supposed to file and pay tax. Sometimes they don't. Mm. So um, this would, this would uh, apply the same rule to trusts, states, um, who else? Anybody else? Just those two. Uh, trust estates, uh, LLCs, perhaps. LLCs, well, that's, yeah. okay. Now, uh, it, it, was, it was interesting to us because... The, you know, when we were talking about the re debate, okay, uh, somebody else had introduced a bill to withhold taxes on dividend distributions by REITs. And the Attorney General said it's uh, unconstitutional. You said what? That it's unconstitutional. And um, uh, so, so I was thinking, uh, okay, well, if that's unconstitutional, uh, then why is it that... Uh, you, you can withhold on distributions to partners in a partnership or uh, beneficiaries of a trust. Or, or a foreign corporation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at, at, some, at some point... Um, but what's the argument exactly? What provision are we talking about? A commerce clause? What? Uh, that there's no jurisdiction to tax the, the shareholder because there's no nexus. Because there's they're no nexus, they're not here. Yeah. But you're not actually taxing them. You're... You're causing the entity that is paying them to set aside the money. It's different, isn't it? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's only valid if it's to, to enforce a, a valid tax obligation of the, uh, of the owner, partner, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and Has if, this been tested in the courts? I don't think so. Mm. Okay, so we're, we're really getting into uh, Hawaii taking more aggressive steps. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, again, it, it, it's, it sounds like uh, what we already do with S-corporations, because we do withhold on distributions to S-corporation yeah. shareholders. But why not LLCs? Why not trust in the states? It, I mean, it seems, seems the, the same. I mean, is there, is there an argument to be made against applying this to other types of entities? Well, I think at some point you get so many shareholders that it's, 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 it's impossible to keep track of. That doesn't sound to me like a, you know, a good justification for uh, just tricking your tax line. Yeah. Do you think it'll pass? Uh, it's it's still in play. Still in play. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, who would who would oppose it? Would would I guess a trust company would oppose it? A, a trust would oppose it? Um, maybe. You know, the thing is, an LLC is, is really a, a, just like a corporation in so many ways. Yeah, yeah well, um, the, uh, there's, there's an association of what's called um, publicly traded partnerships that, that, that was running an exception for this because they, they, they're saying, well, yeah, we have too many members and, and uh, it's you know, difficult or impossible for the partnerships to know who they're paying. Mm -hmm. Again, something that... <clears throat> I'm kind, of, I'm kind of wondering what, how, how logical that is, but that's, that's their argument. Yeah. You know, I mean, in, in a way, this goes back to the REIT thing in the sense that if we start being draconian and uh, ever so aggressive about, um, you know, cutting the fruit off the tree before it leaves town, um, then we're going to develop a reputation and maybe some energy. Oh, we already have there. that. We already have that. So it's not going to make a difference. Probably not. Okay. All right. I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not Taxachusetts or, you know, Tax Health tax Connecticut, <laughs> but um, uh, we're getting up there. We're getting, we're up, getting there. up there. Oh, we're yeah. being more aggressive this year. Yeah. As the leadership in the legislature is uh, trying to raise more money in every way it can, yeah? And okay. spend less in every way it can. I, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> hey, we have Except a, for raises. Speaking of raises, we have an estate tax hike. I think we talked about that a little bit last no, time. No, no. Okay. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a bill uh, that will raise the estate tax rate 20% uh, on taxable estates over $10 million. This is the inheritance tax, the state inheritance tax. Yes. Okay. 
Yes. Um, which would, I think, uh, put us at the very top of the list, tied with Washington State for the highest estate tax. Well, that's really too bad because, you know, we're supposed we to. We always be... wanted to be the top dog. Yeah, right. We didn't want to be the top dog. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about, uh, you know, our image, you know, and our reputation. Um, and that, that's pretty aggressive. And you want to encourage people to come here in their retirement years and, and, and buy property and spend money and all those things that we have been trying to do since statehood. Now, this, that's, that's turning away people, isn't it? You want to tax their estates that high? Hmm? Well, I mean, how, how many of us are worth $10 million? <laughs> okay, all right. So, some, some people are, actually. To, I could introduce you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and a lot of them create a lot of jobs here. So I mean, are, are we telling them, OK, fine, uh, uh, you know, thanks for visiting, but go away now and go move to Vegas? Don't be something? a resident. Yeah. Don't be a resident, because this will, this will affix to your estate. Not so good. So that, that's, to me, that's a turn off, arguably. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are voting with their feet. And, and, and these you know, people who have money, uh, they are very much in a position to pack up and leave somewhere sure. if they... If I have $10 million, uh, and uh, this is going to be 20% of my estate, another state doesn't have such a tax, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote with my feet. Yeah, yeah. and certainly do that. Okay. Um, we've got a lot of things in the transient accommodations area. So, so there's a, uh, a tax that's imposed on timeshare, or the transient occupancy tax. Um, and it, it's currently involved, uh, imposed on like half the, the daily maintenance charge for a week when you, when you stay there a week. They want to double that. Really? Mm -hmm. Double? I mean, that's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty dramatic increase, isn't it? Double it? Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, the estate, I mean, the, the, their argument, the carbon taxation's argument had been, Oh, geez, this, this formula uh, is clearly inadequate. It doesn't, it doesn't produce anywhere near the fair market value that we, we were you know, supposed to tax. But, but my reply to that is, well, look, guys, in the law that, that exists today, there's a, uh, there's a provision that says, if you guys don't think that this formula is representative of fair market value, you can assess on the fair market value. Just, just prove it up. But they never proved it up. Ah. It sounds like somebody's lazy. Yeah, and then they go tell the legislature, oh, this is clearly inadequate. So just double it. Yeah, so let's double the, the easy, it. It's a way to cut corners is what, and avoid the, the, the dirty work of proving it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, which yeah, I mean, to me, to me, that leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Well, no. I, yeah, it's not, it's not good tax policy to do that anyway, double a tax. So um, uh, how, how good a chance does this have in passing? Okay, um, it's dead on the House side, but there's, there's, there's a chance that um, the Senate will you know, shove this material into something that exists on the Senate side, or a House bill that's crossed over. Is this one of those um, you know, bills that, where the actual amount of the increase is left for conference and would be surprised after? No, not, not this one. Now, uh, one, of the, one of the ones where, where, the, where we, we could have a surprise is there was an income tax bill that was approved by the House. It's now in the Senate, right? It was supposed to basically just, just eliminate the lower brackets and compress the rest. But now all the amounts are blank. So it could be a massive increase when it comes out. We don't know. I don't understand how those things can be handled um, by um, blanks that are determined in the darkness. Democracy dies in darkness. The public has really no input on that, won't even know what happens, won't be there. Right. And we'll find out by, by surprise, by ambush, um, you know, after, exactly. the, after the bill comes out of uh, the conference committee. There's a good reason to change the system, in my opinion. Yeah, that one, I think, is a little extreme. I mean, you need to have something uh, to confer about. And, and you know, when, when, you have, when you have all blanks in, in a bill, yeah. Well, we've been talking about trying to get a handle on what effect, you know, a given rate increase is going to have on, on the taxpayer and on, on the public fisc. How can you, you can't get a handle on it. You can't evaluate it if it's a blank. 
You don't know. And who is going to know if it happens in the darkness of a conference committee? Nobody will know. And it'll be wrong. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what I don't understand is how, how lawmakers can vote for a bill that contains everything blank. When the rate is everything. Yeah. It's all about the rate. Tax is all about the rate. You could have a zero rate or a 100% rate. It's a big difference. It's a very big difference. <laughs> Okay, that, uh, that, one is, that one's steaming right along then, eh? Right. The blanks bill. The blanks bill is steaming right <laughs> along. Now, um, still in the transient accommodations tax world, uh, we had uh, some back and forth about resort fees last time. Uh, and, and, and last year, uh, it resulted in a bill that actually got vetoed by the governor uh, because they, they kind of carelessly defined a resort fee as everything. And... <laughs> And, 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 it, and it would apply to uh, anything that a hotel provided to a guest. Literally anything. How do you value that? If it's on the folio, it's taxable under the transient accommodation tax. So, so that was obviously too much. And this year they stuck with um, uh, defining a resort fee as a mandatory charge. Okay, so you, if you stay the night, you got to pay this. Then it's, then it's part of the room charge, which, which I think is, the, is, is a reasonable interpretation of the law. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the, uh, the department's enforcement position. So uh, the, bills, the bill has uh, passed. It's going to go up to the governor. Uh, and it's probably going to be signed because it's consistent with the department's current position. Yeah, and, and so few tourists actually come down to the legislature and testify. Well, that too. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, and since it is consistent with the department's current position, it's probably not going to create you know, a revenue increase. Yeah. Why do I feel this is a, a legislature of increased taxes? And when you say Donovan's dozen or Dirty Dozen, as the case may be, you're really talking about a legislature that is fascinated that, with fiscal, fiscal issues and is going to try to raise money in every which way it can. And uh, without necessarily thinking of the effect on the, on the taxpayers, uh, or on the state's reputation, or in the state's primary industry, tourism. Am I right about this, Tom? I'm, I, I get a little concerned just schmoozing with you here today. <laughs> I'm always concerned. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's your job, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I'm a professional worrier, I guess. <laughs> That's Tom Yamachika. He's a professional worrier. And we love worrying with him. We want to come down again and again and give us a blow-by-blow -blow dynamic description of what's going on in tax in the legislature. Now's the time. No man or woman's life or property is safe. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show. Aloha.